Okay, welcome to episode three of uh, the Science of Setup. Um, now that we've got the uh, basics under our belt, we've got the uh, physics and some of the suspension uh, properties. Uh, now we can start getting into the meat of setup. Uh, so what we're going to talk about this episode is weight transfer. And weight transfer, it, it, the tools that you have to, uh, to deal with weight transfer are the CG position, roll center positions, shock angles and mounting points, and spring rates and anti-roll bars. Uh, some of these are better than others, and we'll illustrate that as we go through this uh, demo here. Okay, so let's get on with RC Crew Chief. What uh, we're going to use, if you're following along uh, with the uh, uh, with the program, we're going to use the one tenth uh, four wheel drive touring car for most of this episode. So if you select that one from the list, we'll be all set to go. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a fictitious setup here that. Uh, we're going to use and use to adjust and, and look at the different methods that we can uh, we can employ. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this setup. So I'm just going to do something fairly simple, but is kind of wacky. Uh, I'm going to essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm going to change this uh, front to rear roll couple. So I'm going to soften the front roll stiffness. Uh, relative to the rear, uh, which is going to make the car uh, want to oversteer or, or loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the lower shock mount inboard and the upper shock I'm going to lay it down as much as I can. So you can see here I'm at 41%. Uh, so this should be quite loose. You can see the difference in the roll stiffness. Uh, next I'm going to go to the softest shock I've got. Okay, so I want to save this. I don't want to mess up my starting setup, so I'm just going to create a new setup here, and I'm going to call this uh, weight transfer. And we're going to save that. So this is going to be our reference that we're going to use throughout the uh, demo here to look at uh, different features or different uh, ways that we can adjust uh, weight transfer. Let's move this over a little bit so we can see the whole screen. Um, Okay, so now we're going to go to our weight transfer page, and before we go anywhere here, I should explain how this works. So we've got three corner phases. We've got corner entry, so you're break, <coughs> excuse me, braking and turning at the same time. Um, then we've got neutral power, which would be mid corner. So we're not accelerating or braking; we're just turning. So we just have lateral G on the car. And then finally, we've got the corner exit, where we're accelerating and uh, turning at the same time. So on the you see here is a sort of a representation of a car with the front, or sorry, with the rear and the and the front axles and the circles that are attached to the end of them. So the diameter of the circle is a relative indication of how much load is on that tire. Um, so you can see here in the front it's a little less than what's on the rear. Uh, on the inside we have significantly less uh, load on the inside tires, which you would expect when you're going through a corner. Um, and the other thing you'll see as we move through this is there will be two circles. There will be a red circle and a gray circle. The gray circle represents what the settings that you currently have displayed on this page are. And the red circle represents the reference setup that we started with back here. So it represents everything that we have in this setup. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, look at what we can do to get rid of this loose condition we want to see this blue bar basically disappear so that the car is neutral so first thing we're going to do is look at what we can do with uh, center of gravity so we got this little pop-up we can bring up here and we can adjust our, our uh, side to side center of gravity fore and aft center of gravity <clears throat> now we can make huge changes here obviously Making a huge change like that in the car is a little more difficult than just moving a slider on the screen. So what we need to do here is uh, move the center of gravity rearward to try and get rid of this loose condition. So I'm just going to click a little bit here. Let's see, uh, we started at minus 3 and now we're at minus 11. That's the how far rearward the uh, center of gravity is from the midpoint between the front and rear axle. So we're at minus 11, so if we apply this, okay, you can see we've got rid of some 
of our uh, oversteer condition. You also see we have these two different circles here now. So the represents the current setup and, and our reference setup. So let's go a little further. Let's go down to like 17 and let's apply that. Okay, we're getting close. So let's keep going a little more. Let's go down to minus 22. Okay, so there. So if we could figure out a way that we could move our center of gravity about 20 millimeters rearward, um, that would solve our oversteer problem. Uh, practically, that's not easy to achieve. Uh, the only way you're going to be able to do that is add a ton of weight or reposition all your components on your chassis so that you can get the weight rearward. So just want to show you this. Uh, it's not really a practical solution, but adjusting your center of gravity definitely has impacts on, on how the uh, weight transfer occurs. So let's just reset this back to where we were. Close this guy out. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we can do with uh, roll center positions. So what we need to do is either stiffen the front, which means raising the front roll center, or soften the rear, which means lowering the, the rear roll center. So let's see what we can do here. So if we pop up our suspension geometry window here. Um, so to soften, or sorry, stiffen the the front suspension, what we need to do is raise the roll center. Uh, we can do that by raising this bottom link. So the more horizontal this link is, the higher the roll center is. The more horizontal, it can actually go higher than horizontal, and that's going to bring your roll center up above ground level. Um, the other thing we can do is put down angle on our uh, upper link so we can lower the inner point or raise the upper point. Now, one thing I want, to, want you to pay attention to while we're doing this is what happens not only to the roll center, but also to the camber gain. Uh, because you can't change one without changing the other when you're modifying your suspe or suspension geometry. So, here we go. So, what we're going to do is we're going to raise this up as high as we can. So, we're going to go up to our one millimeter shim. And then we're going to lower the inner one as much as we can. So, we're going to go down there. So, notice now that we've gone, our camber gain has increased. <clears throat> It was at 0.1, it's now at 0.3, and our roll center is now up higher. It's at minus 2, it was at minus 5.3. So now let's raise this outer mount point as high as we can get it. Uh, get up to 2, so we get up to 2, and that's as much as we can do with the settings we have available on this uh, suspension setup. So our roll center is now at minus 1, and our camber gain has increased significantly from 0.1 to 0 0.4. So I'm not going to get into details on what camera gain does. I just want you to be aware of uh, the change that it or the impact that it has. So let's apply that. And now you can see we've got our uh, increased weight transfer on the front. The gray circle is the load that's on the front now. We've moved 17 grams across and we've moved 17 grams the other side on the rear. So we should have more rear grip now and less front grip. So we still want to try and get this higher. So let's go and look at our rear suspension. Let's close this out. Let's look at the rear suspension. So we want to do the opposite on the rear. We want to soften the rear. So the way we could do that is by lowering the rear roll center, which would mean lowering this um, mounting point. Uh, unfortunately, we're as low as we can go. We're already at zero millimeters. So what we can do is we can raise the upper inner uh, link position and lower the outer position. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, notice our camber gain is 0.14 and our roll center is minus 4.28. So let's go ahead and raise this outer one as high as we can go. Okay, so we've lowered our roll center significantly and we've also gone negative in our camber gain. Negative camber gain is definitely not something that you want to try and achieve. Um, so this would not be something that you would want to do in real life, but you never know. If you wanted to get rid of a ton of grip, I guess that might be something you want to try. So let's just apply that and see if we're there yet. No, we're not, so we could use some more. So let's lower the outer one as much as we can. <coughs> we'll get down to zero, and let's apply that. And there we go. So we've managed to lower our roll center down to 10.6 millimeters below ground level, and our camber gain is now at negative 6.4. Definitely not a good thing. 
anyways, we're just looking at weight transfer here. So let's close this out. Um, let's create a setup so we can go back later and we can do some comparisons. So let's copy these uh, uh, changes. We don't want to apply it to the current setup because we want to keep that. So let's create a new setup. Okay, so this is going to take us back to here. And the next one on the list is going to be the one we just created. It's got the wacky suspension. So let's call this, uh, let's just call it RC for Roll Center. And let's save that. Okay, let's go back to our base setup that we're using for comparison here and back to our rate transfer tab. Now we've looked at suspension, let's have a look at what we can do um, just purely changing shock angles and mounting positions. So let's open up our shock window here and what we can do is just change our shock angle. So let's start standing our shock up. Notice here we've got to have a display of the ride stiffness and roll stiffness and how much of a change we've made. So just by moving up two holes, uh, standing the shock up two holes, uh, we've increased the stiffness by 9%. So let's apply that and see if that made a difference. Made a difference, but not nearly enough. So let's stand it up another couple holes and apply that. Still not quite there. So let's go all the way up and apply that and see if that's made it. No, we've increased the stiffness by 20%, but it still wasn't enough. So let's have a look at what we can do in the rear. So if we pull the rear up here, we can lay it down a couple holes. So let's lay this down a couple holes. See we now 9% softer in the rear. Let's see what that's done. Helped us a bit, but still not enough. So let's go back to the front. And we do have one more change we can make here to stiffen this up. We can move our lower mount point outboard. So let's do that. So now you can see that made a big change in the uh, in the stiffness. So now it's 49%. So let's apply that and now we've gone too far. So let's go back and lay our shock down a couple holes and apply that. And there we go. So now we've got ourselves back to a balanced condition and uh, uh, purely by changing shock angles. Much easier way than, than uh, making um, suspension changes and or CG changes. Okay, so let's close this guy out and let's save this one because we're going to go and do some comparisons at the end. So let's copy our new settings and we'll create a new setup again. And let's go back to our, our um, selection list here. And this one is the one that was just created. So let's just call this weight transfer, uh, let's call it shock angles. And save that. Okay, let's go back to our reference one again and back over to the weight transfer tab. So we got one more way we want to look at doing this and that would be just purely changing spring rates. So let's see if we can achieve this by just changing spring rates and possibly anti-roll bars. So right off the top let's crank our go up a couple spring rates and you can see yes that made a change but not enough. Let's go up a couple more. Still not enough. Go to our hardest spring we've got. Still not enough. Okay, well, we could increase the stiffness of our front anti-roll bar. So let's do that. Okay, still not enough. All right, in the rear, uh, we can't do anything with our springs. We're already at the softest spring. So the only thing we can do on the rear would be to disconnect the rear anti-roll bar which I've done here, and you can see that's close. We're almost uh, almost balanced. So let's save this as well. Create a new setup. And let's give this a name of... Let's call it... Spring... Okay. So, we've got our initial 
reference uh, setup that we created here. Let's move this over so we can see all the numbers. So we've got our, our reference one. Uh, so the two numbers we're going to look at mainly here are going to be the, uh, the roll couple and the roll sense, or three numbers, sorry, roll couple, roll sensitivity, and our Cambrian numbers quickly. So let's look at our first one, which was the roll center. So you can see here that our roll couple is pretty much where, uh, where it was. We've got it 40.39 and we're 40.24. So roll couple is virtually unchanged because we didn't change any of our springs or anything of that nature. All we did was change our roll centers. So our roll centers have changed huge. Our ride frequency is also significantly different front to rear. This is uh, the, the frequency that the suspension would oscillate if you could uh, excite it. It would uh, be at a much higher rate on the rear than the front. Uh, our chassis roll sensitivity has gone up a little bit, so it's a little softer. It's going to roll a little bit more. But the big problem here is in our camber gains. They are really out of whack. So this not really something that you want to do. So let's have a look at our uh, shock angle change one. So our shock angle change compared to our reference one. So our roll couple was 40.39 and our roll sensitivity was 1.1. So now we've got our roll couple is almost 50%. So 50%, as you know, is, is should be a perfectly balanced uh, setup for a car with uh, the same front and rear roll centers and the center of gravity in the middle of the car. Uh, so this is pretty good. Uh, our chassis roll sensitivity, we're a little bit stiffer than what we were with our base one, but that may be okay. car is going to be a little bit more responsive, and it's not crazy stiff. Uh, our camber gain numbers are reasonable. We have a uh, positive camber gain, which is, is what you want. So this one is pretty good. So let's look at our last one, which was the one we just did with the springs and anti-roll bars. And with the springs and anti-roll bars, we didn't quite get where we needed to be. So our front to rear roll couples is only 47%, and we wanted it up as close to 50 as we could get it. Uh, our roll sensitivity is a little softer, so we are, have a little, uh, little bit more roll in the car. Um, and our camber gains are fine. So in the real world, probably what I would do in this situation, I would use a combination of these two guys because I wouldn't want to have the hardest spring I've got on the uh, on the front and I probably would not want to disconnect my rear anti-roll bar so what I would do is I would use a combination of shock angle changes and spring rate changes and anti-roll bar changes the long uh, or the uh, the short answer for this whole thing is weight transfer. Generally, you're going to want to use your shock springs and anti roll bars to do that. Um, suspension geometry is not the way to go about changing your weight transfer. Okay, I think that about does it for me. Uh, just want to do a quick summary. So here's your the method one, the CG position, not practical. Method two, roll center change only. So that's okay for if you're just doing small changes, fine tuning. Um, but be aware of the fact that uh, changes you make there uh, are not just changing roll center, they're also changing camber gain. Uh, the third method, uh, just changing shock position. So that does not affect your camber gain or your roll centers. Uh, and uh, it actually increased, the, or, or sorry, decreased the uh, roll sensitivity. So it was a, a higher stiffness overall stiffness and the fourth method we looked at was just doing front and rear and anti-roll bar changes um, that gets the same result but uh, ended up with a, actually a softer setup so those are the four methods you can use realistically method three and method four are the ones you're going to want to stick with okay so that's it
up next, episode four, we're going to look at overall stiffness, how we can adjust the, how responsive the chassis is. So stay tuned.